This is a video about the real Christ, unconditional love, Jesus, the twelve disciples, and the Bible. Good morning. This is Chris speaking from Wake Up, and today is Christmas. And today I want to talk about the real Christ and unconditional love. I never was a big fan of Christianity, the Christian church or churches, but there is a message in Christianity that is still there. You can still find it. And the best person to explain it is Bernadette Roberts. The main message of Christianity is love, unconditional love. And unconditional love is really unconditional. It is just there because it's not yours. You can let yourself be filled up with it, but it's not yours. It's also not, love is actually not the best term for it. I would call it oneness, but in Christianity it's called love. It's actually very similar to Bhakti Yoga. It has nothing to do with desire. Desire in Sanskrit, for example, is karma. You want something, you long for something. That's not the same. Love is a universal law. It's just there. It emanates from the divine or from the universe, whatever you want to call it. And you can choose to be open to it or close to it. If you're afraid or angry or full of shame and guilt and stuff, you're close to it. And if you just let it be, if you surrender, then you're open to it. And love is the gateway to enlightenment. Love and surrender are the gateway to enlightenment, if that is your goal. You can also stay in the love phase. Love does not have an object or a subject. It is just there. It is part of the divine and is a way to feel the divine or feel the universe. And that's what it means to be the Christ. Now, partly to feel this love and to emanate this love, also to pass it on, but also full enlightenment. Enlightenment meaning you're not a person anymore, you're merging with the divine, with the universe. The person Jesus is not so important. And the whole thing about sin and taking away the sins for humanity and so on, this is also not important because there's no sin anyway. Only ignorance or enlightenment. But everyone who has gotten to this avatar level of enlightenment is just merging with the divine and there's no more person left, no more personality, no more ego left. And there's the feeling that the divine... And the self is the same. The other interesting thing about Jesus and his disciples is or was that they were a group of enlightened people. Uh, they were a group of around 12 people plus a few more like Maria and half of them were enlightened and half of them weren't but most of them were at least awake. This is very rare. This is very rare to have a group of awakened, enlightened people working together for a common goal. In addition of this, half of those disciples, and Jesus included, and Maria, a lot of them were in a very high state of enlightenment up to avatar level. Not only Jesus, there were more than one. So the possibilities, what they were able to do, were enormous. So at that time there were around 100 people enlightened on the whole planet. And about 10 of them were in one place working together for the same goal. Unfortunately, we have no direct transmission, no direct writing of what they did and what they said. We have the Bible in many, many translations, some of them horrible and the Bible has been changed over the centuries. There's one Bible that has been translated from ancient Aramaic directly, the Lamsa Bible, which is recommendable. But even here, uh, there are problems. First of all, the Old Testament has almost nothing to do with the New Testament. And within the New Testament also there's the differences of consciousness. 
the different chapters and the different verses they have they do not have the same level of consciousness the highest in the new testament the highest consciousness is usually in the gospel and the lowest is the revelation also it's interesting to know that peter and later paul who was not one of the disciples but uh, pretended to be they were the ones on whose teachings the church the catholic church was founded and they had not been very advanced the advanced ones like maria and judas and andrew and matthew we don't know much about them what happened to them afterwards but most of the disciples they went to greece they fled to greece and started preaching there except thomas who went to india and started preaching there very funny when the first european conquerors and traders came to india they wanted to preach christianity and they said oh we know about that since many centuries already then the last thing i want to talk about is monotheism there are three big monotheistic religions christianity judaism and islam and one of their main messages is of course there's only one god there are not many gods i cannot speak for islam or judaism but in christianity the meaning of this is that there is not there cannot be more than the divine the divine is all and everything and you could just as well call it the universe you don't have to call it the divine or god because it's not a person that's one of the craziest things uh, christianity ever came up with is that is some white haired dude with a large beard sitting in the sky that's definitely not god there are beings in the subtle sphere that claim to be gods but they're useless on the way to enlightenment you don't meet beings you don't meet any gods or angels or stuff and if you do ignore them it's not the real deal and if you ever reach full enlightenment or avatar level then it's the same it's not that you're merging with a person who is called god you're just merging with everything in the universe and then of course you could call yourself the son of god or the daughter of god because it's it's the same the soul trinity thing is at the center at the core of christianity the father the son and the holy spirit but it's all the same you can call it oneness or the divine or god or satchitananda whatever you want to call it i call it oneness and this oneness starts with the love phase yeah first you wake up then the love phase starts some people go directly to the love phase especially in religious contexts and this love gets deeper and deeper and deeper universal love absolutely unconditional love and then if you continue to surrender if you continue to give up your desires and your fears and trust the universe then enlightenment can happen and it is given to you that's the other thing um that is also hinted at in christianity it's not an achievement it's given to you it's grace it's the divine giving love and enlightenment to you as a gift but it's not a person who is giving it to you and also you don't need to be a special person you don't need to be born a savior or a messiah everyone and everything is the same there is no difference that's the whole thing of enlightenment that you see that there's no difference there's no difference between you and a molecule of air and a grain of sand and the bird on the trees or the tree itself or you and another person there's no difference and from this realization also unconditional love can come from or it can lead to this and i just talked recently with two friends and colleagues on the way of mine um, how unconditional really unconditional love is and it's not a feeling of bliss or rapture yeah, it's not like sex or something it doesn't sweep you off your feet it's just there it's just there and it it's everywhere that's the beautiful thing 
It's silent, like intuition. It's caressing. It's not like a burning sunbeam. It's it's very, very soft and fine and exquisite. It's not overwhelming. It's underlying everything. And that's the big problem of people who are trying to find this. They're waiting for something that feels like falling in love. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like something you've never felt before and at the same time it feels like something you've known all your life. You just didn't listen to it up till now. In most European languages there's only one word for love, except Greek. Uh, there's agape, for example, for pure love, philia, for brotherly or family love, and erotas, for desire and sexual, romantic love. But usually, in most languages, European languages, there's only one word for love, and this creates misunderstandings. Well, in other languages, in most Asian languages, there are many words, like Sanskrit, for example, has so many words for love, maybe ten or more. A karma is desire, for example, bhakti is devotion, sneha, maternal love, rati is delight, prema is pure, unconditional, divine love, bhava is the state of love without object, but can also mean attitude, Kuruna is compassion, mir is friendship, man is inter intellectual pondering of love, and so on. But what I'm talking here about is mainly prema and bhakti, yeah? Not desire, not longing. It doesn't come from you and it doesn't have an object. It's not something that you want. And wanting it actually prevents you from having it. Yeah, Just surrender, let everything go. And then you can hear the background noise that is there all along, has been there all along. And when you're silent enough in your mind, you can hear it and feel it. Okay, Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing to this channel on YouTube, Facebook or Patreon. And see you soon.